The Saudi government announced today that more than a thousand people have died during this year's Hajj pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia, saying many of the cases were due to extreme heat. Hajj is the annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca from Saudi Arabia that is required of every able Muslim once in their life. The Saudi government released a statement saying majority of those who died were, quote, unauthorized to perform Hajj and included, quote, several elderly and chronically ill individuals. A couple from Maryland are among those who died. Deaths are not uncommon at the Hajj, which has seen at times over 2 million people travel to Saudi Arabia for a five-day pilgrimage. All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which is to say in the Paleo Hebrew, Yahweh, which is the name of our Heavenly Father, meaning He is, Bahashem, meaning in the name, Yahweh Shai, meaning He is our salvation, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus a so called black man. And as you see from the clip that was just played, you know, over a thousand people perish on their pilgrim on their pilgrimage to, you know, worship the Hajj, okay? Which is that, you know, that Kaaba stone, all right? This is Deuteronomy 28 and 64, and it reads, And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy father have known. It's like you even wood and stone. Okay, and you see the Maryland couple from here in America, you know, travel all the way across the, the globe to go worship this stone, this cobble stone, okay? And in the midst of doing it, they perish, okay? They were unalive, all right? Showing you that uh, Islam is not the way to go, okay? The Most High says, thou shalt have no other gods before thee, okay? The Most High is a jealous God, okay? Deuteronomy 4 and 24. Deuteronomy 4 and 24. It says, for Yahweh thy power is a consuming fire, even a jealous power. So here it is, the truth, <clears throat> Slocky, here it is, the truth being spread on a mass scale, you know, and our people are not receptive to it. And yet they want to continue to stay in their ways and risk judgment in the most uncommon ways. OK, because who think they're going to go, you know, halfway across the world? I'm sure they have done this numerous times, but this time it's different and get taken out by the heat. OK, that's why the Most High, he tells us he is long suffering that none should perish. OK, but when you don't follow the ways of the Most High and you sin, you risk running the gauntlet that you can be judged at any time. OK, and who knows how many more of our people were in that number. All right. But this just goes to show you that Islam is not the way to go, okay? The Most High, just like that, of 1,300 people, okay? With the heat, all right? And it tells us that, all right? In the book of, uh, what is that, Ecclesiastes? <clears throat> Salakia, no. Um, second, matter of fact, let me just go there. Give me one second to all right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 9, and it reads, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then thou shalt understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So when you see part of the signs, you know, began to pass, then you should know that it is the very same time that the highest will begin to visit the world, which he made. There sh there <clears throat> therefore, when there should be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Right. So these are all things in diverse places because the heat, you know, we talking about it's been a time now 
that this is some of the most, you know, excruciating heat ever to, you know, be recorded. Okay. And here it is. You want to go make this pilgrims across the, you know, across the world to go worship this, this stone. And now you got to be part of that number along with 1200 or 1300 plus more people that got, you know, unalive that was perished by the way of this heat. Okay. Make no mistake about it. The most high, he lays on strokes. Okay. And he can bring it forth in the way of a regular, you know, heart attack, or he could bring it on the way of a stroke as far as heat stroke. Okay. So you run the chance and risk the chance of putting yourself out there in dire straits by going against this word. Okay. Romans 6 and 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. What is sin? Transgressing the law. Okay. What is the law? The word that the Most High gave to our forefather Moses. Okay. And what was one of the commandments? Thou shalt not have any other God before thee. When you go and you worship that stone and you bow down to it, you are putting that stone above the Most High. That's why we started off in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 64th verse. You know, our fathers never worship a stone or a piece of wood or cross. Okay. That's why you see, and you're going to see more of these things happen. Okay. Firing and, you know, by firing, I mean the, uh, the, the act of unloading a firearm in these buildings that they call churches. Because we know that what? The Most High does not dwell in buildings built with hands. Okay? If heaven is his footstool and earth is his, uh, earth is his you know, chair, roughly paraphrasing, then what is it that you build? Okay? <clears throat> you cannot build a place to contain the Most High. He is a consuming fire in its true essence. So it says, verse 2, Then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Okay? So, you know, seeing 1,300 people perish just like that, in the blink of an eye, and they, you know, attempt to go worship and pay homage to this, this stone that they believe somehow gives them, you know, a closer insight or a closer, you know, up close relationship with who they call, you know, God, Allah. That's going off. Okay. That's going off. All right. And you risk the chance of you putting yourself in, you know, dire straits, you know, getting judged. All right. This is uh, Amos. This is Amos 5 in verse 21. It reads, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Now, this is going back to our people when, you know, you, you know, we were, you know, keep the feast days but we would keep them in vain because why we would you know go off and sin and then try to keep the feast days but this could be reference to other you know feast days and holidays especially those of other religions okay so it says amos 5 and 21 i hate i despise your feast days and i will not smell in your solemn assemblies the most high is not amongst all those people and what did the lady say you got 2 million people that come there to make that pilgrims. And you think the most high is amongst them? No. He says, I, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. So he's not in the midst of them. They call on a false idol, a false God, Allah. And they pray and face, you know, that cobblestone. And they think somehow that they're in the right, that they're coming closer to, you know, enlightenment by, you know, acknowledging a stone. That will somehow, you know, draw them closer to who they call God, Allah. The Most High is not with that. He's not in their solemn, uh, solemn assemblies. So it says, 21, Amos 5 and 21. I hate, 
I despise your feast days and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. So although they consider themselves putting up their bodies as a sacrifice for a sweet savior by making that pilgrimage, the Most High does not, you know, smell in their assemblies. All of those two, two million people. All of those two million peoples that come there annually to make that pilgrimage is in vain. Okay? It's in vain. The Most High is not with them. Okay? The Most High doesn't dwell in uh, temples made with hands, and he damn sure don't dwell in a rock or a cube or a stone created, with, created by the hand of a man. Okay? He does not dwell in that stone, that cobblestone, man. Our fathers didn't know about no cobblestone. Our forefathers knew nothing of a cobblestone. You can't get and find it in the Bible where we worship a cobblestone or a stone or a wood or a cross. Okay? But these are one of the these are two of the major religions that our people are in. False religions, Christianity and Islam. All right. With no salvation you're going to get no salvation out of either one of them all right in fact you're going to get the opposite you're going to get you know mourning unalive perish all right and it was put on display 1300 just like that now they want to chalk it up to most of them being you know elderly and sick no man <laughs> because if your God is who you say he is, he would have looked out for them. All right. Showing you that there ain't no salvation in these other false religions, man. OK, you Jakes, you so-called blacks, Latinos and the Native Americans. You need to turn back and repent. Turn back to the father and repent from your wicked ways, man, while you still have time. All right. Because time is running out. All right. Keep playing if you want to. And then it's going to be too late. You're going to get that judgment. All right. So the most I ain't dealing with your assemblies, okay? He's not. He's not smelling them. He's not taking part of them, part of them. He's not in the midst of them. Even with two million people, okay? He's not in the midst of them. All right. 1300 taken out just like that. Man. Hey, the most high is to be feared, okay? Hebrews 10 and 31. Let's go there. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and verse 31. It said, it's a, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You see, our power, whose name is Yahweh, is a living God. He's a living power. Not no damn stone. Damn sure not no piece of wood, man. Yet you want to bow down and worship this stone and wood, man. That can't bring you anything. Okay. And Jeremiah went into it in his epistle. You know. Jeremiah really went into these false idols, man. The letter of Jeremiah, man. He goes into it in this whole thing. This whole thing is good. A copy. A, we'll read a little bit of it. A copy of an epistle which Jeremy sent unto them which were to be led captives into Babylon by the king of the Babylonians to certify them as it was commandment, commanded him of the Most High. Let's see if we can jump down to it. See if we can pick up a few verses with or Jeremy. Jeremiah, you know, cuts into these false idols, man. Let's just leave, let's just look at verse twenty-five. It says, "The things were in there is no breath." are bought for a most high price 26 they are born upon shoulders having no feet whereby they declare unto men that they be nothing worth 27 they also that serve them are ashamed for if they fall to the ground at any time 
they cannot rise up again of themselves. So these false idols, these statues, if they fall on the ground, if they are, you know, the God or they are God, surely they can get up off the ground by themselves, but they can't. Showing you furthermore that these damn idols are worthless, are useless, man. These statues, these monuments that you pay homage to and you worship, if somebody tilt them over, they can't get up on their own because there's no life in them, okay? There's ju they're just pieces of wood and iron. It says, verse 27, they also that serve them are ashamed. For if they fall to the ground at any time, they cannot rise up again of themselves. Neither if one set them upright, can they move can they move of themselves? So they can't even move around. That cobblestone can't do shit, man. It can't move. It, it needs somebody to come clean it. What kind of God is that? What kind of images you worshiping that can't even, you know, move itself? It says, can they move of themselves? Neither if they be bought, bowed down, can they make themselves straight. But, they set gifts before them as unto dead man. Right. And you damn jakes, man. You go worship a stone that can't do shit for you, man. Ain't no power within that damn stone. And you go and you bow down and you get on your knees and you worship that shit, man. That's going off. And even worse to that cross. Okay. You wear it around your neck. You think it's giving you some kind of powers and it can't do nothing. All right. These idols, these religions, that's, that's, they just that. Religions, nothing else. They can't do anything for you. They just there to deceive you. Okay? Christianity and Islam, there's no salvation in either one of them. It says, as for the things that are sacrificed unto them, their priests sell and abuse. And I can guarantee you, you know, some somehow, somewhere, there's somebody behind that pilgrims that's making money of the people coming there. Whether you got to pay an entry fee or some kind of way, there's money being made in that, you know, in that pilgrimage. OK, in that cobblestone, there's money being made. The true meaning and motive behind that pilgrims, you'll see money somehow, some way, somehow, somewhere is being involved in that whole thing, man. It says, as for the things that are sacrificed unto them, their priests sell and abuse. In like manner, their wives lay up part thereof in salt. But unto the poor and important, they give nothing of it. Right, man. And you got, you know, this that's just it, man. Those people from Maryland, they spent money to get on a ticket. They had to probably, you know, get their spot to get, you know, close to the rock whoever pays the most money get closer to the rock you know and there's no there's no kind of salvation or power that you're getting from a stone that can't do anything okay it can't maintain itself it can't keep itself it can't keep bugs or birds from shitting on it it can't do any of that if a bird come shit on it it can't wipe the shit off you see there's no power in that stone, man. And y'all want to go worship it, okay? There's no power, all right? So that's the letter of Jeremiah, Jeremy, okay? And he goes into it, man. He goes and he, he tears a hole in it. He, he tears a new one in these, you know, these false idols, man. This whole letter is, is you know, deep, man. But that's our people, man. They want to be so you know, important or they want to feel so connected to a power that doesn't even exist that they willing to come halfway around the world to go on a pilgrimage to something that don't, you know, bring forth salvation when they got the truth right here at home, man. They got the truth right here and they refuse to listen to it because why? They are stiff necked people, man. That's why the most side jacking them up, man. Left to right. Ain't no damn excuse for why you should be going to some uh, place and worshiping a damn rock, man. You need to get the judgment that comes to you, all right? And much more, because our people still won't 
you know, return from their wicked ways, man. That's why the Most High is going to jack a lot of people up, man. And two-thirds of our people got to go here in Babylon the Great. There's no excuse you from Maryland and you flying halfway across the world when you got the truth right here in your backyard. But you mock and you laugh at the service. So that's why the Most High is mocking and laughing at your ass. Proverbs 1 and 26. This is Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 26. It says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So the Most High mocking and laughing at your ass, man. You want to go halfway around the world to worship a false religion and pay homage and go on a pilgrimage to a false idol when you got the truth right here in your backyard. Ain't no excuse, man. You get the judgment that you want. And, you know, Jake, they got a proud for ass spirit on them, man. They got a proud spirit. You know, they rather go to a, a inside a church to feel more closer to who they think God is than to take heed and take advice from the service that's out here on the highways and hedges preaching the truth. Okay? That's Jake proud ass spirit, man. You got a powerful spirit, okay? Because it ain't put and presented in a shiny package in a building with a cross on it, you know, by individuals dressed up in a three-piece suit. It can't be the truth. That's that prosperity bull crap, man. And that's why a lot of Jake's gonna get jacked up. Because you rather, you rather worship a goddamn idol than to worship the truth and live in power, all right? whose name is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So, you know, go ahead and worship whatever you want to worship, man, and get jacked up, and the Most High is going to laugh at you, and we're going to laugh at you too, because we told you and we warned you, all right? So Proverbs 1 and 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when, you, when your fear cometh, all right? So, hey, Good for you, all right? You heard about the truth. You heard it. You rejected it. You wanted to go worship that false idol. So good for you, along with the rest that perish, man, who want to worship those false idols, all right? Speaking of our people, because the other races don't matter. They don't have salvation. It's, all, it's only, salvation is only afforded to the elect, okay? You so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, and not out of all of y'all is going to receive it. Only the elect out of our people is going to get it on this side. All right. So you know what? Go, go ahead and continue to mock the most side. And he going to mock and laugh at your calamity. All right. So that's all I wanted to do and bring it out and report on that. Because 1300 was unalive just like that. In a sacrifice or should I say a sanctified, sanctified moment that they call a pilgrims to pay homage to the stone. All right. See how that we see how that ended up, man. And if our people don't repent and turn back from their wicked ways, a lot more is going to happen, man. So you want to continue to be stiff neck, be it. But the most high ain't going to take no pity on you. All right. Because he sent servants that, you know, prophesied and was sent out of the prophesy. Let's get that. Jeremiah 35, man. Ain't no more, there ain't no more excuses for your sin. You can't play that, oh, I didn't know card anymore because the truth is going out high volume. This is Jeremiah 35 and verse 5. Like it. One second. Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. What was I at? This is Jeremiah 35 and verse 15. It reads, I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets. Rising up early and sending them, saying, 
Return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear nor hearkened unto me. So that's what you get, man. You don't want to hearken and incline your ear to the servants that the Most High have put before you to tell you to turn back from serving these other gods, man. So now the Most High and his servants, they're going to mock you, man, at your calamity, all right? We're going to do videos on you. We're going to, you know, bring out and show the people that, listen, this is what happened when you go against the word of the Most High. This is what can happen to you. You can get jacked up. You can be part of the numbers, all right? And they put a face to them. They put a face to those two individuals from Maryland, man. Jay, they put a face to them, all right? This is Exodus. This is Exodus 20 and verse 1. It says, And the Most High spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, thy power, which have bought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That stone is a god. Okay? You making that stone a god, and in doing so, you making it and putting it above the true and living power, Yahweh. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Islam, Christian, uh, Buddha, any other god. You're not supposed to have them before him or at all. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. So you bowing yourself down to that rock, getting on those mats and praying to that rock, you serving another God, man. Nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, thy power am a jealous power. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That's right. And the most I ain't smelling in your assembly, uh, your solemn assemblies, and he hates your feast days, your pilgrims days, your, you know, whatever other type of days you celebrate, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all of that, your birthday, all of that. He ain't having it. He hates it, man. All right. And you worshiping these other gods, you know, shows what? That you hate him. All right. You serving these other gods showing you showing that you hate the most high, Yahweh. You go and worship that that rock, that stone that our fathers never knew shows that you hate the most high. OK, point blank. You worshiping that that white boy, that so-called white man. Jesus Christ, Caesar, Bo Caesar Bozier, through the form of that cross, shows that you hate the Most High. You worshiping that fat boy Buddha, you know, shows that you hate the Most High, okay? And what happens? Judgment. 1300, just like that. And much more, okay? Much more. Your time is running out. Your time is running out, Jake. You don't have all the time in the world to repent. Contrary to what you've been told, the Most High is coming back through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, to visit this world, and He's gonna tear up. He's gonna He's gonna tear up some shit, man. Okay, and if you ain't on the right side, you are gonna get that judgment. All right, point blank. All right, let's go ahead and uh, finish up and close out with First Peter five and eight. This is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. And it reads, be sober, be vigilant. Why? 
because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And he wants you to go make that pilgrims. You see, he wants that. He knows if you sin against the true and living power, Yahweh, that he can devour you, that the Most High will allow him to come at you, get you by the way of a heat stroke, by the way of whatever it is that the judgment is that's set out for you because your time has ran out. You didn't want to repent. Whether it's, you know, going to the, to the store and someone comes in there and let off a few rounds, okay? You never know how you're going to get taken out. That's why we tell you, put on the full armor of the Most High, Ephesians 6, starting at verse 12 to about 18. Put on the full armor of the Most High from head to toe so that you don't be caught and taken un unsurprised, unaware. Okay? No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Isaiah 54 and 17. But if you don't have the whole armor on, that weapon can prosper. Okay? The angels encampeth around us. You got to have on the whole armor, man. You out there celebrating and worshiping another God, you don't have on the whole armor, okay? You opening up yourself for that weapon to prosper, point blank, okay? And 1,300 got it. And who knows how many out of those 1,300 are Jakes that had the opportunity to repent and, and receive not the, the, the true message from the true and living power, Yahweh, but wanted to go worship a false idol and bow down to a stone and call on a false name like Allah. Okay? Who knows how many of those 1,300 were Jake's, man? And had to get it. So that's what it is. Be sober or get jacked up. Be vigilant or get jacked up. Keep watching, man. You don't want to fall off and get that hedge removed from around you. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the true and living power. Okay? Not no fake rock. Not no fake cross. Who cares about that? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the true and living power. One that could really mess you up. One that could torment you both body and soul. Torment you in hell both body and soul. That's who we fear, man. Yahweh. Okay, there's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the true and living power. You don't know how you can get taken out, man. That's what keep us, that's what keep us, you know, fearful. <clears throat> that's what keep us on edge. We don't want to get taken out, man. You get, man, that's, you don't know how to, man. Hey. Hey, be sober, be vigilant. You don't know how the Most High can take somebody out. I did a video a while back. A woman was just sitting in her car and the sign, like a billboard, just fell down and, and crushed the car with her inside and unalived her. You don't want to be on the wrong side of that judgment, man. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the true and living power, man. Yahweh. That's why, hey, we fear the Most High, man. And we pray that Most High don't remove the Holy Spirit from off of us so that we can endure to the end, man. We just trying to get to the end to get, you know, uh, changed into those, those uh, uncorruptible bodies, man. So we can get out of this place. Hey, we trying to endure to the end to fight off this sinful flesh, man. We understand we're not perfect, but we trying, we giving it the best of our ability, man, to the end. We praying that the Most High bring the end so we can get rid of this sinful flesh and get those new bodies, man, those, those incorruptible bodies and get programmed with, you know, the law, statute, commandments so that we'll never go off again, man. And to that happens, we got to be on point, man. We got to be sober. We got to be vigilant, all right? We got to have the whole armor on because falling out of this truth 
can allow you to receive judgment that you can't even think about, man. Damn heat stroke. A billboard falling on you. Who knows, man? It ain't worth it ain't worth running the risk. All right. All right, so be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. All right, and with that being said, I pray someone was edified through this lesson and until the next time, if it be the Lord's will, stay strong, stay in the faith. We almost home. Shalom. Peace.